hey hi everyone today we will see a open source embedding database or you can call it you know open source vector db which is called a chroma db lot of my videos which you know wherever i covered let's say vector db you know this semantic search video or even you know lang chain and pine cone and all of these things i always use a pine cone as a you know vector db but then lot of people ask me you know on linkedin and on you know even in this youtube comments that you know why we are not using any open source you know vector db so i do use open source vector db and recently you know i started using chroma db more frequently so i will cover chroma db in this particular video you know we will see how to create the you know chroma db let's say a vector db how do we store documents there what kind of a default embedding let's say the chroma db is using you know which uh, you know embedding algorithm or model it uses what if we want to use our own model right uh, how do we filter the documents and all of these things right we will see in this particular video so the first thing you know uh, so you can go and visit actually the you know chroma db website learn more about it what we're going to do we're going to do simply hands on i assume we are already familiar with let's say embedding vector db if you're not there are a lot of videos that you can go here right in in this video i will more focus on you know hands on you know uh, you know trying to use chroma db you know do semantic search and that kind of stuff right so i already installed chroma db you can use simply a pip install chroma db and pip install sentence transformer because you know it's going to use sentence transformer as uh, you know uh, sentence uh, this model right so it is using default model called this particular model from the sentence transformer to create the embedding so we need that dependency so how do we create the uh, db first of all we need to import let's say chroma db then you create the chroma db client and using client you can create the collection so what is the collection the so collection is where you actually your store your embedding right you can think of it as a table or something like that uh, in terms of relational uh, thing right so let's say we create the collection we we will give it name let's say youtube a yt demo and this is a collection now once you have the collection you can store document inside this collection so the syntax is you know you can to call it say add method collection dot add and what we're going to add we need this couple of things so first thing you know we can add a list of documents you know you could see here each document is simply one sentence here we will see more concrete example you know below but you know this is what we have let's say the list of documents and then for each document you might want to add some metadata right let's say this document is some kind of a text file or pdf file and you know you might want to add some category associated with you might want to add actually the name of the file itself inside the metadata so that when you retrieve the you know relevant chunk or whatever the page or document from the vector db you need to know what you know from which particular let's say file this particular chunk chunk came so you might put so metadata is nothing but a dictionary for each of this document you can put a dictionary like a key value pair and you can put all of this value like a category you can call it anything this is what you will define right so we have only let's say two document one is about the cat and the other one is about the car and we say the category of the first document is like let's say animal the other is like a vehicle right this is not necessary we can ignore the metadata but then we have to give some ids to it right so we give the id one and id two you could see they are matching like you know first document the second document and you could simply add them okay the collection is not defined maybe we haven't run this particular you know sale and let's run this particular thing so by default it will create you know uh, a db since we haven't specified here while creating the db where to store that particular db it will create in a memory so it has created in a memory and you could see here we could see by default it has used this particular embedding model which i mentioned here right uh, for the once we since we haven't passed any embedding here right what we pass we directly pass a document and then it will take care of it will take this document use this embedding model and then actually you know store this embedding now once we have this collection right where we already added document now we can query this collection we can pass our query text and we can say how many results you want to get back you know whether one two three let's say we want only one now i want to search a word let's say vehicle and i want to get the most matching document because i mean only using n is equal to one i want the most matching document which is matches with the vehicle and you could see when i search vehicle it is matching against the car document right so semantically it is able to match this particular document with the all the documents here and we could see we got the topmost document which is related to the car so this is how it works right but now let's see how we can do this all things you know with respect to whatever let's say so we have some files so i have some sample data here let's say i have a, a folder called pets 
where I have a lot of, you know, articles about the pets. One is talking about, you know, different types of pet animals, you know, so health care for those pets, nutrition, emotional bond between humans and pets, and some training and behavior for the pets. Let's say I have this kind of, you know, document that I want to index, and then eventually I want to ask any query that can be answered from this document. But here, we are not focusing on rather answering, rather we are more focusing on, you know, if I ask some query, I just want to get the relevant chunk or relevant document from my vector DB. Right. And then you can use that, you know, maybe that document, give it to GPT and you can do a lot of things that we have covered already in multiple videos. Right. But here, let's see whether we can index this all five documents and whether we can ask some query and get the relevant, you know, let's say information. So I have this one function. What it is going to do? It's taking the folder path, which is the page. Right. Then we're going to iterate through all the files what we have. We're going to check is the file ending with the txt. This is just condition what I added, right? And then we're going to simply read that file and going to append that data here, right? But while appending, you could see I'm appending as one dictionary for each file. For each file, the dictionary contains the name of the file and the content. Why name? Because I want to use this name as a you know metadata um, in the vector DB. So if I run this thing, this is what I will get. I get you know the first the file name which is the one which you see here and the content associated with it right so this is what let's say you will be having a different kind of document you might have pdf then you need to read those pdf files right now let's say i want to index these five files which i already read here in this particular let's say list of dictionary right and you just uh, you just saw that whenever you create the collection we want to pass list of documents metadata and ids right so let's create the list of documents and metadata for the files that we just you know read so we will declare the documents as an empty list, metadata as an empty list, and the IDs as an empty list, right? Then we will iterate through our file data, which is the list of dictionary, right? And then what we will do in the documents, we will attain the content part of it. Since it is a dictionary, we're going to attach the content inside the documents. In the metadata, we will attach one dictionary saying that, you know, source of this particular information, which is coming as a file name here. So we're going to store file name as a source inside this dictionary, which will be put inside the metadata. And then I'm just iterate, while iterating, I'm just, you know, taking that index of that particular, you know, element in this list and creating as an ID. So you could see, you know, we can get some, so, so okay, I haven't run this particular sale. So let's run this sale and then look at the metadata. So you could see for each of this uh, file, we have this dictionary as a metadata, which is which contain only one key, which is the source, right? Similarly, uh, the documents will be a simply, you know, list of, uh, oh, no, no, again, I'm running. Okay, doesn't matter. Mm, yeah, here I want to show you, right? So these are the documents, right? Nothing but some list of documents. We don't want this. Okay, so similarly, metadata. Now we have all the information, documents, metadata, and IDs, right? But this time, what we will do, if you see here, you don't see our database created anywhere here, right? This time, what we will do, we will add some setting, uh, you know, to this particular Chrome IDB client saying that we want to use this particular type of implementation. I haven't read much about this thing. You can go and read about this thing. What is important for me is that I want to tell where to persist this particular database or the vector DB that we are creating, right? So we are saying, you know, store it in a paid DB. So it will create that particular thing. So let's see what happens when you run this thing, refresh here. You could see we got this directory, but it seems empty because it just initialized this particular directory, right? Now, let's create the collection. We will call our collection as a pet collection, okay? And then inside this pet collection, we're going to add the documents, metadata, and IDs that we just created on the top, which is all related to pet animals, right? So we already created this thing. Now let's add this document to our pet collection. Since it has already added this document, and let's see. Yeah, you see there are something got created index and all of these things but again if you see we are not passing any embedding here at this moment right because by default it is using some embedding model that we just saw on the app right so we are only passing the document but i will show you after you know uh, the below in this notebook i'm going to show you how to use your own embedding uh, model rather than using the default one right but let's say with the default one what's happening now we know that we have some documents inserted which are related to let's say pets now let's ask some query we want to ask this query, what are the different kinds of pets people commonly own, right? And let's see what we get matching. And we are getting matching, which document got the matching? Different types of pet animals, okay? This is expected that we will get because that is the document which talks about the animals, kinds of animals we can have it as a pet, right? Now let's slightly ask a different question. You see, we are not adding any filter condition, nothing. We are just passing our query document and saying how many results I want back, right? 
now let's see another uh, query we want to use like what are the emotional benefits of owning a pet now let's see which documents get match now we could see whatever this content which talk about the companionship emotional support and all of this thing right so the emotional bond between humans so you could see definitely it is working so when we ask something related to this we got a relevant document back right so this is how this semantic search is working with this particular vector db right now what we want to see we don't want to use let's say this default embedding what if you want to use open ai embedding where you want to use some different model from the sentence transformer right so we will see so let's see uh, the default one was which one is this let's look at it again it was something called all mini lm right all mini lm and let's say i want to try something else so i am going to use a different model which is called paraphrase something so i'm not saying this is good model or bad just to example that you know i want a different model to try actually so let's first of all you know get that model from the sentence transformer once we have that model we can actually encode this document right so see it is downloading it will be the small model because that's what i choose it you know so we got this model let me clear this stuff now i have the model now we want the same thing what we just did here right collecting this metadata and all of this thing but now we have one more extra array or a list which is nothing but the list of embedding what we want so let's go here so what we're going to add these two lines got increased now when we are iterating through our file data we want to take our content and pass through the model dot encode method which is going to convert this content it takes into the embedding or vector representation and then we convert into the list this requires if if we don't convert into the list you know then this gives you know some kind of a type error so make sure you have this thing right and then we insert this embedding just like we inserted our document so now you got four thing embedding metadata ids and documents right let's run this thing right but now let's create the new uh, collection we will call this new collection as a pet collection underscore embedding right so that it stores the embedding because we're going to pass the embedding also here so let's call this pet collection embedding now instead of asking so if you remember wherever we uh, you know the earlier we didn't pass any embedding and so while asking question or the query also we didn't pass any embedding we asked with the plain text so this time since we have passed the embedding we can actually query using embedding right so first of all let's take the same query what we got now instead of passing this query directly we will create the embedding and then we will pass as a query embedding rather than uh, what is that query text so we're going to pass it as a query embedding and let's see what we get and we could see we still got the similar answer like different types of pet animals regarding to this particular question so either you go via let's say you know embedding or normal query right usually it's better to use your own embedding model right because you might not be happy with whatever the default model you know as i told you you might want to use let's say open ai embedding or there are other embeddings also available right so you most likely using this kind of syntax when you want to store right maybe we can try you know food that are recommended for dogs and we can see yes so some nutrition and all of these things are coming right so this is you know how uh, we can query this particular thing right this is how we can you know query all of this thing maybe we can add some filters also you know uh, when we are actually asking so we got this nutrition and kind of thing right so what if we add some filter i think i just saw some area we can add filter like this you can add a where condition which will filter uh, you know uh, the metadata you added let's say this is where document which is nothing but while you're searching through the document you might want to add let's say condition from which you know document you want to get the answer let's say this particular thing right or maybe in a food recommended or maybe we can try this plain one what are the emotional this thing right let's say we want to add condition where condition such as that some word should be present in this particular document then and then it can be used for searching so what word we might add let's say let's say this reptiles we will add that it should contain the reptiles word by default we got which one we got we got the emotional bond that is the most matching we got now let's see what we will get or maybe i run it you know in a different cell so this time you see we got a different document matching why because since now we put some condition we want to make sure we only want to get relevant chunk from a document which contain the reptiles so that's why 
the one which was the most matching earlier which was actually you know this emotional bond and all these things now it got matched with the different because we put a different keyword right so this is how you can put condition when you want to search right you might want to make sure that you know if it contains particular keyword then i know then only that's you know uh, documents can be used to answer this particular query similarly just we can check inside the you know let's say um, document where document should contain we can also add a condition for metadata because we know that we have a added the metadata condition so rather than this condition let's add the metadata condition right let's take this thing and you know we add only where condition which we can check against the metadata actually so let's this thing you know emotional benefits and all of this thing right but now we know the best one is matching this but what if we force it to you know match against this example right so uh, it, this might not be the correct thing because you know uh, it is possible that let's say you have one pdf file or one text file which is very long and you got hundreds of chunks out of it right then it is possible that you know that one uh, the source value right what you are passing is associated with the multiple chunk right so i think we have added a source what we added let me check again yeah the source is the key right so where was that yeah here so if you see where condition take which meta key you want to match and what value you want to match against right now if i search this thing uh, you know this will anyway give me you know the same answer yeah different types of paid let's use let's force it to use you know different healthcare nutrition maybe you know the training and behavior right so if you use this one it will simply force to answer where the chunk is associated currently it is not making sense because for each file we have only one chunk right then it got only match with this particular training and behavior but it is possible when you work with some long files you know that source value training and behavior you might have hundreds of chunk associated with that source right and you might want to make sure that you know rather than searching through all the files what you have i only want to get the relevant chunk from this particular file or having some kind of so the source need not to be always file name it could be anything just like in the earlier example we put a metadata i guess as a category you know here we put category it could be anything anything that will help you segregate filter your documents that is something you can put right so this is how the chroma db works you know later you can simply save your you know uh, that chroma db into let's say zip file or something you can download and then you can use the same file you know because uh, you know while loading you can specify which directory holds the chroma db so i will be creating maybe more videos on this open source uh, you know db maybe i will create one more video where i you know show how to use chroma db with let's say langchain because the langchain using chroma db as a default but i see there are many tutorials available with langchain but i thought of doing as a plain chroma db so that you can use it without actually you know a uh, lang chain whenever you want to use i hope you found this video useful if you have any doubts or any suggestion let me know in the comment thank you